Wow. I'm amazed that people are at church this morning. This church is on fire. Julian, Charlene, this is absolutely incredible. The real Christians are here. The guy's going to heaven. <laughs> we might go to heaven sooner than the others. But isn't it great to be here? And I, I, just, I just felt the Lord saying this morning on, on my way here, and my wife and I were chatting about it, I just, I just felt the Lord had a word uh, for, I, I call you guys um, ULC. Is that okay? Is that an abbreviation that you used, or just Urban Light? Well, I, I call you guys ULC. And um, I don't know if there are any other UFC fans out there. I enjoy a bit of UFC and uh, cage fighting. I enjoy watching it. Good sport. And I just, I just felt the Lord kind of saying that over this church this morning, that um, Urban Light has been called to wrestle down to the ground principalities and some strongholds, even over the city, that you're going to be a church that will bring down into submission some strongholds that the church needs to see brought down. And I just speak that over over this church, over this community, I just felt the Spirit saying that, that ULC, you've been called to wrestle things to the ground. You are not a, a timid church, you are a full contact church, and God is going to be using you mightily. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Well, it's so good to be here. Julian took my joke about spitting on the people in the front, but if you don't mind, I am going to put this on. I may or may not have it. I'm not sure. I'm waiting for the test to come back. Is that okay? You don't mind if I... I'm just kidding. Wow, what a season we're living in. Everything has changed since last week. Last week I preached at our church on the morning, the next morning. That was on Sunday. And let me tell you, the next morning, Monday, things had changed. And um, we, we're living in a different world in the last week. Isn't that right? And uh, it's an exciting time to be living in. A very exciting time, but a challenging time. But I feel that God is doing something incredible in his church. Something that Julian and Charlene spoke over this church for this year. And that is, what is your guys' theme this year? An awakening. Is that right? Pastor Julian's been ministering that. And uh, when he mentioned that to me earlier on in the year, I thought, wow, what, a, what an interesting theme. And uh, we see today that, that Pastor Julian was in tune with the spirits when, uh, when God shared with him that the theme for, for Urban Light this year is going to be an awakening. Because now, all the church leaders are speaking about an awakening. Isn't that interesting? And God's way is always, always different to ours. We didn't know how he was going to do it, but we can all agree this morning he's doing it. There's an awakening. There's an awakening taking place. People are actually beginning to read their Bibles again. People are beginning to pray again. People are even spending time with family members again. People are coming back. And we, we were just singing that song, beautiful song this morning. One of the phrases went, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you. And that's what God's doing. He's awakening us and calling his people back to him. Can anything bad happen from that? No. When we get back to our first love, back to the original works. And uh, none of us thought it would be happening like this. Hey, Julian, we weren't too sure how the awakening, but Julian had that in, in his spirit there was, God was saying the awakening's coming. Well, it's here. We don't have to wait for it anymore. It's here, and he's going to awaken his church. And so I just want to say you guys are in a church, an incredible church. I just honor Pastor Julian and Pastor Charlene. We love you guys. Hey, man, we've known each other since we are this big, man. In fact, maybe even in our, no, not in our mother's wombs. I don't think so, but, but close, not far off. And uh, it's been great just having a friendship with Julian. And we love you guys. We're part of this family. Um, I feel like a, a son in this house too. So thank you. We honor you guys and we love you so much. And uh, God is doing incredible things here in this church. And um, we just look forward to what God's going to be doing going forward. So you guys have just come off the back of a great series uh, in Timothy. Is that right? Um, I was just listening to Pastor Julian's preach from last Sunday. Wow. You guys have got a preacher in the house, I tell you what. Pastor Julian, world class, hey? World class, amen? He is world class. And uh, some of those points that Julian just, just shared, those four A's, so powerful. And um, this, today, for those of you taking notes, I, I just want to speak from the angle of catch it. Can we all say that? Okay, well, I'm going to put it into practice. Let's see. 
Oh, let's give that man a hand. Whoa. <laughs> Buddy, if we ever have an inter-church cricket game, that guy's on my side. <laughs> right, let's see. Any other good catches out there? Oh, that was a bad throw, Grant. Okay, I'm going to go for an easy one. Catch. Right, let's see. Over there. Let's see. Oh, hey, good catch. And we've got a few more. We're going to go like that. Hey, nearly, nearly the same guy. Am I allowed touching these things with all this? They're probably not going to eat them now, right? I didn't think of that. <laughs> okay, I'll give it to my wife. Good catch. Who else wants one? Who really wants one? Who's going to eat this? If it, I sterilized my hands. None of you. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Have we got a picture? How's this guy? Wow. Quite a catch. But look how the team reacted in the next picture. I think we've got another photo. Look at this guy, man. Hey, who wants that guy on their team? Thanks, guys. We can go back to the home screen. If you've got your Bibles yet today, could we just turn to 2 Peter chapter 3? 2 Peter chapter 3 is our text today. So the word corona, and uh, I'm... We are going to just touch on it briefly. But the word corona, and some of you might have seen that video that went around. Julian, did you see that video that went around with that priest just sharing this? Um, who knows what the word corona actually means? Anybody Googled it? Or? Sheesh, I thought everybody would have by now. It means crown. There's a couple of meanings for it, but the Latin word literally means crown. So interesting. And in the, recently a prayer... There was a Catholic prayer that has been found. They, they, they write their prayers and, and they keep all their prayers in a piece of paper. And recently a prayer that was written by a lady in 1944 has been found. And it's called the Corona of Mercy. The Corona of Mercy. And really what this lady's prayer was is that, that Jesus, would you as our crown, as our head, have mercy on us as mankind? Would, you, would, the, would the crown of mercy be the banner over our lives? And uh, it's so interesting that that's what the word means. And, and really what, what this gentleman was saying is that there are so many other crowns that we have begun to wear. So many other kings have taken precedence over our lives. Isn't that right? I wrote a few of them down. Social media, business, busyness. Money, sports, technology, so many things have taken their, the place of our king. And I speak to myself. And it's amazing how God is allowing this to happen. We agree with Pastor Julian that it's not from God. But how many of us know this morning that God causes all things to work together for his good, for his purposes. And so God is going to take this thing and he's going he's to allow all those other crowns that we've had to fall off. That the crown of mercy, King Jesus, can come and reign again. That he can take his rightful place. That he can become our crown again. Isn't that incredible? That that's what the word means. And so before we get into our text this morning, I want us to watch a, just a quick little video clip that I'm sure many of you have seen. Um, if you haven't, uh, trust that you enjoy it. But check this out. How's the people? Bro? Hey, lucky. So I'm just trying to stay safe with the coronas and all that. Check. Yeah, it's in a district. Hey, hey, I got coronavirus. Hey, hey, I nearly got robbed, yeah. Hey, hey luckily I got the virus and you know, all the chicks and other people gave me my phone back. <laughs> Who's seen that one? A few of you, yeah? Fantastic. And I just feel that God is saying that um, that which has been stolen in our lives is coming back. That which has been stolen through society, is coming back. I believe that God is restoring intimacy. Our intimacy has been stolen uh, by things of this world, and God is going to bring our intimacy back, our intimacy with Him. I believe that God is restoring joy. I believe that our joy has been stolen through the pressures of life and all sorts of other crowns that we've been almost forced to, to fall under. Uh, God is going to be bringing some things back that have been stolen. Genesis 50 verse 20. Genesis 50 verse 20 tells the story of Joseph and his brothers. 
and uh, the, 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 the restoration that took place. But this is what this powerful scripture that Joseph uh, said, Genesis 50 verse 20, what was meant for evil, God has turned around to accomplish what is happening now, the saving of many lives. What was meant for evil, God has turned around to accomplish His purpose. And this, and this is His purpose, that many lives will be saved. Isn't that incredible? And so what, was, what is meant for evil through this disease, through this corona disease, God is going to turn it around for His purposes that many will be saved. Isn't that incredible? That's exciting. And so God is going to take this pandemic... And he's going to turn it around and turn it into good. Do you believe that this morning? And God wants to use each one of us. He wants to use you as he brings us back, as he restores things that have been stolen. Um, the joy, the peace, all those things that society has stolen. As God restores that, he's going to use you to reach out and to impact others. Amen. And so I encourage us as a church, I encourage us as, as people of God. Let's get back to basics. Let's get back to falling in love with Jesus. Isn't it great to know that God is not holding the pressure of the pressure that we so easily fall under, the pressure we so easily come under, the depression we experience? That's not God's plan for us. And so He's shaking, He's allowing things to be shaken up so that those burdens can begin to lift again. And people will begin to see a church that is in love with Jesus, a church that walks in peace, a church that walks in the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? I know that you did a series on that last year. And so let's look at our text this morning, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. And I love what Julian said in his talk last week. He said, often the end of a letter is the juicy part, the end of a love letter. You want to find out, does this chick like me or not? And I heard one comment there in Julian's letter. One girl said he's got nice legs. Hey, Charlene, is that true? Hey, he didn't forget legs day at the gym, eh? And so it's so true that at the end of a lot of these letters in the Bible that, that men have written uh, is the punchline. And we're going to read the end of the two letters that Peter wrote. So it's 2 Peter 3, verse 16. How many of us know this morning that some things are better caught than taught. Some things are better caught than taught. I, I, we, we, you know, as, as sports people, you trained, uh, you've taught how to catch and, and how to stop a ball if you're a goalkeeper or a cricket player, whatever you are. But really, it's in the heat of the moment that you're either going to drop it or catch it. And some things are better, you, you can't teach some things. Teaching is good, but I believe that God is wanting us to catch some things. We know that with this virus, uh, we've been told not to hang out, uh, not to kiss each other too much, but I told my wife that rule is not applying in our household, the kissing rule. And um, so we taught, there's a whole lot of things that we're not meant to do. But I want to submit to us this morning that really with God, that's not how it works. In order for us to catch some things from God, we've got to do all those things we're getting told not to do with this virus. We've got to get close to God. We've got to press in to catch what he wants us to catch. Uh, I wrote this down. We actually need to be sneezed on by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need to get, get, we've got to get close. And so often we're not catching what God has us to catch because we've put all these things in place. We are far from him. We, we're keeping him at a distance maybe because we... we of condemnation or we're looking at our own performance or our own ability and so we're kind of keeping God at a distance and God is saying no 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 this season I want to break in I want to get close I want you to come close again I want you to come and hear my heartbeat I want to sneeze on you I want to I want to breathe on you could we all just turn to the person on our left and breathe on them no I'm joking so you guys aren't laughing too much <laughs> hey Julian who you got to speak this morning <laughs> what, what kind of false f false prophet is this but I trust that you get the point. In the, in the physical, in the natural, what are we being told at the moment? What do you think the Spirit's saying? It's time to get close. Can you see that? Often through a natural experience, God is wanting to teach us a spiritual truth. 
And it's sometimes opposite, not sometimes, in fact, the kingdom of God is always opposite. It's always right side up. This world is upside down. The kingdom of heaven is right side up. And so I believe God is wanting to, us to catch some things. And so let's go to our, our text, and then we've just got four very quick points that I'm trusting we will catch in this season that we're facing as people. And this text is called the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. Can we all say that? The day of the Lord. How many of us know that on Sunday evening and into Monday, that was a big day. God had his day. He's allowed this thing to happen. And I'm going to pick it up from verse 3. Above all, are we all there? 2 Peter 3. Hey, this big guy is still here. Okay, cool. Wonderful. There it is. Above all, you must understand that in the last day, scoffers will come. Scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming? He promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately, deliberately forget that long ago by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. I'm skipping verse 6, verse 7, verse 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, let's read this together out loud. A day, as I want to hear you guys, is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. Thank you. Verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Didn't Monday come like a thief? Quickly, quickly. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. And I can believe that because this coronavirus has done just that. Not completely that, the earth hasn't fallen, but just overnight, just quickly. This is just an illustration of how quickly something can change. Verse 11, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you and I to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens. Read down verse 14. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Verse 15, bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God has given him. Point number one this morning that I believe the Spirit of God is wanting us to catch is to catch understanding. We need understanding. How many of us know that we need understanding in the times that we're living? Is there anybody out there like me some days, you, God, I just don't understand what's going on. Not just with the virus, but sometimes with our own personal situations. Maybe our health, maybe our family. I mean, in the last six months, we, we've experienced some family relationship pressures like never before. I don't know if anybody else has. And I've been like, God, I, I can't understand. Why is this happening? It doesn't feel right. There's a, there's a, there's a wrestling and a turmoil. Verse 3 says, above all, above all, all other things, you must understand you must understand. Friends, as, as children of God, we need to understand the times we're living in. Because if we're going to be confused, the world will see a confused church. Amen? We need to understand who God is and how He operates. And I know that we're all saved. Well, no, most of us, I'm sure, have Jesus as Lord of our lives. And I know we know scriptures, etc., etc., but if I'm totally honest, there's sometimes when I still don't understand, God, what, what is going on here. And that's okay. There are seasons where we can't figure everything out. But we've got to understand the bigger picture of God. We need to be believers that are at peace 
with the way God is doing things. Amen? The world is going to need to know this week that there's hope. And we can only have hope and peace and joy when we understand what's going on. And so Peter was, was warning the church. He said, above all, you must understand that in the last days, X, Y, Z are going to be happening. Catch understanding. Understand this, that crazy things will happen. This corona is crazy. It's crazy. But it's not the first time things like this have happened. I heard C.S. Lewis recently, um, sorry, I read recently a letter by C.S. Lewis, um, a famous writer and storyteller. He wrote Narnia and many others. But C.S. Lewis says this, he says, and he was writing in the, in the 60s, and at that time, the pandemic facing the world was the atomic bomb. That's what everybody was panicking about. And he just went on to explain. He said, friends, there's, a, there's been many other atomic bombs or coronas right through history. God has allowed these things to happen. But there is a much greater death sentence that we all have, and it's called sin. And C.S. Lewis was just addressing and writing to people, saying, guys, if we get killed by an atomic bomb and we know Jesus, it's okay. Because the, the biggest death sentence, the sentence of sin, has been dealt with. Amen? And so we need to be those people. We need to have that attitude. We need to understand that we are saved no matter what crazy things go down. And that's the attitude we've got to carry into our workplaces, into our families, our communities. No matter what crazy things go down, it's going to be okay. John 16, says, In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, be of good cheer, be joyful, for I, Jesus, have overcome the world. Amen? In this world, you will have trouble. Don't look so freaked out, church. Don't panic. We've been warned. Jesus warned us. He says, it's not going to be a smooth, perfect road. Amen. Understand this in terms of un catching understanding. Understand this, that there will be a temptation to doubt and give up believing. Let's read it from our text this morning. Verse 4 says this, they will say, where is this coming that he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. And so already there, there was a temptation. And it, these letters are written to the church. This is, not just, this is not for unbelievers. This is to the church. People in the church are beginning to say, where is this coming that was spoken about? And that was only a few decades after Jesus. They were already doubting. How far down are we? We? 2,000. Years already. No wonder sometimes we grow a little bit weary. God, where are you? Friends, the church needs to know and see a church that understands that Jesus is definitely coming back again. No matter what we're facing. And guess what? It might not even be in our generation. It might not even be in our lifetime. Because the Bible says that one day is as a thousand years. It could still be another few thousand. I'll tell you what. Hey, Julian. Yes, are we living in the end times? Absolutely. But yeah, 2,000 verse, uh, 2000 years ago, the scriptures say, in the, verse 3, in the last days. So then already, 2,000 years ago were the last days. The last days had begun already. Can you see how time, when I said this to somebody uh, uh, the other day, I said, my buddy, our kids, 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 kids could, will probably be going on joy rides to Mars and stuff one day. And these little vehicles they get to be, you never know, Jules. They will be having, we'll be having urban light services in Mars, but I will be tapping in from, because I know Julian is with it. I tell you, so the generations to come here at urban light, they're going to be ministering into space. Anyway, please humor me. I'm just saying, don't freak out. Don't panic. Understand? God's got this. He always has. Jesus is coming. These guys were battling then, a few decades after, I want to give up, God, where are you? This is so terrible, the sin, the issues, the government, the world. No, 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 no. He is coming. Understand this? A thousand years is like a day. God's patient. Let us catch understanding. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says, Though it cost you everything you have, get understanding. 
Though it costs you everything you have, get understanding. I believe God's wanting to strip us down a little bit in this season. He's wanting to make us travel a little bit lighter. So, and in, in, the, in the midst of getting rid of some stuff, understanding is going to come. Amen? And I just thought of this. Well, how do we understand? What about this? Why don't we flip? Because God loves flipping things around. We'll see things one way. God sees it another way. We see through human eyes. He sees through spiritual eyes. We, we see through fear. He sees through faith. And so we're going to flip quickly the word understand around. And if you flip it around, what does it say? Stand under. Stand under. Pastor Julian mentioned Psalm 9 verse 1. He who abides under the shadow and shelter of the Most High. And my dad was a mechanic most of his life. Any mechanics here today? Oh, all clever computer people. Okay. No, that's fine. It's all right. And I remember as a little boy growing up, we'd work on the cars and, and try to fix them. And, and I remember there came a time when I had to work on my own gearbox, on my own vehicle. And I was trying to sort the problem out by using one of those trolleys that you lie on, go under the car. I was, then I would come back under into the bonnet and I'd, I'd go down and try to look for the problem, then back underneath and the, it was very tight and, and I just, we couldn't solve the problem. And my dad eventually said, put it on the vehicle pit. Everybody say pit. Put it on the pit and the pit is that, that, that section where you drive the car up onto the ramps but there's an underground part that you walk down and you can stand underneath the vehicle. The vehicle's up there. Man, we did this, and it changed everything. My perspective changed. We were able to find the problem just like that and solve the problem. And I believe that it's, it's time that we get back under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Not, not trying to do it next to him or above him doing our own thing. It's time to come and submit ourselves again under the Lordship. Let all those other crowns fall off and the crown of Jesus take its rightful place again. And three things that we might have heard, what, what can we come under again? What, what can we submit? And I just felt three things that we need to submit our time, our talent, and our treasure. And you may have heard those three things. Our time, it's time to submit our time again to his kingdom. Our talents, our giftings, what we're good at, and our treasure, our finances. It's time to come under authority again with those three areas in our lives and say, God, what is your plan with my finances? Where should I be sowing my finances? And again, this is a season and a time for us to begin to ask some questions. And what are we doing with our time? What are we doing with our talents? And what are we doing with our treasure? Point number two. I believe the Spirit is wanting us to catch patience during the season. Amen? Everybody's excited about that one. Eh? Catch patience. Verse 8 says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. I like the way God is just like humoring us there, you know. He's like saying these humans, they don't actually, they, they get impatient very quickly in their 80 years, yeah. They get very impatient in their 80, 90 years. But he's saying, you guys don't understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. Has God been patient with any of you, anybody here? Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And so interesting in that verse there, we see three areas of patience. First of all, we see that we need patience with God. We need to catch patience and understand again that God's timing is so different to ours. His ways are much higher than ours. His plan for your life is on track. I heard this week that so often we look at our situation and our lives like this. Do you remember those uh, processions called floats? It was called floats. Do you remember that word? Where they would decorate vehicles and pimp them out. And they, remember, who remembers the Maritzburg floats in um, commercial and church? Those are amazing, eh? 
Amazing times. And um, this guy said that so often we look at our time here on earth, our whatever, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, as, as standing in that procession and watching those floats come by. And remember, they would take the corner and then disappear. But he said God's perspective, that's our perspective, that's our experience of life. God's perspective is that imagine being in a chopper and, and hovering over that display and watching it go through the whole city. God's perspective of time and is totally different to ours. And we need to catch that. We need to catch patience with God. Secondly, it says there that God is being patient with you. Point to your, your neighbor and say, God is being patient with you. Point to your least favorite neighbor and tell them, God has been, has been patient with you, my friend. <laughs> I know that God has been patient with me. There it is. It says it. The Lord is not slow in keeping. Instead, He is patient with you. Thank you, Lord. We're the ones that get impatient. God's saying, my friend, I'm patient with you. It's okay. Keep going. It's all right. You've messed up again. It's okay. I'm patient with you. There's some time to get it right. You're going to get it right next time. Watch. Those words that you spoke that you shouldn't have in the heat of the moment there that you messed, messed things up where you and your wife didn't talk for three days, next time, you, you're going to get it right. You're going to make her a cup of tea. <laughs> I think I got it right last night. Eh? Hey, that, he, that moment came where it could have gone left or right. And, uh, and I felt the spirit say, zip it, go to the kettle, make some tea. And it was peace. It was peace. Hallelujah. We got it right. But for the last five times, I think I got it wrong. But God has been patient with me. So we need to catch patience with God. He's not in a rush like we are. We need to have, catch patience for ourselves. And finally, we need to catch patience with others. The end there of verse 9 says, He has been patient with you. And also, he does not want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So why don't we get a bit more patient with God? Let's get patient with ourselves. And I believe as we get those two right, we'll have patience with others. Because people need patience, friends. I know somebody that, that said recently, and I learned from him, he said to me, God challenged him to start looking for the, shorter, uh, the longest cues, not the shortest cues. So when he gets, gets the toll gate, me, I'm like normally, hey, where's the one with two cars? I'm swerving left and right, and people are hooting. Hey, there's one with one car, and I'm in there. He looks for the one with 25 cars because he wants to get in there, slow down, and spend some time with the Lord. Perp toll cues, he looks for the longest one. Hey, me, I'm like... Hey, there's one there. As I get there, they close there. <laughs> so I had to go to the long one anyway. Let's be patient. Number three, I trust that uh, I believe God is wanting us to catch holiness again during this season. To catch holiness. I love this verse. It says, uh, 1 Peter 1 verse 16. 1 Peter 1 verse 16 says, this is, this is God's reason for us being holy. Listen, be holy because I am holy. Simple. Be holy because I am holy. What a great reason. No other reason. Just be holy because I am holy. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 says, He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done. So you don't become holy when, you, when you've got it all together. No, 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 no. He's called us to be holy because of His purpose and His grace. And so often we try to become holy, but we've got to catch holiness. You can't get taught holiness. You've got to catch it. It's God. Holiness is a person. Amen? And number four, finally, catch salvation. Catch salvation. I love how the way this letter ends in verse 15. I'll read from verse 14. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Our Lord's patience means salvation. Isn't that incredible? God has been patient with all creation, with all earth. Through the season, 
that we're in, God is going to be patient with the world because people are going to come to salvation. And so let's look as we go out this week. Let's look, God, who are you drawing? Who are you wanting to save through this pandemic that we're facing? Amen. God has been kind to us. And in closing, I just want to read that scripture again, that story from Joseph that we began with. And this was the story of when Joseph's dad had died and his brothers became extremely fearful that he was going to eliminate them after dad had died. And that's the the background to this. And I'll pick it up from verse 15. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs that we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. They were clever guys. Sent him an email. This is what you are to say, Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs that they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. We know that the shortest verse in the Bible is this, Jesus wept. Jesus was weeping for us. He was weeping for sinners. He was weeping for all of us that would have to face what we face in this world. He was weeping for people that would die from corona, not having found him or known the joy and the intimacy of knowing Jesus. And so Joseph wept. Verse 19, but Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and for your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. I believe in this season, God wants, to, God wants us to hear again how kind, how good he is, that he is the giver of salvation, that he has saved us, that we are going home, we are going to heaven, no matter what, come what, what may, we're going home. Amen.